just about perfect. He lit it off the line, and I think everybody's got away pretty cleanly. And uh, is he going to hold on to it? And Moshe is and is trying to get up the inside as they go into Madrid, but it doesn't quite work for him. So it is Sean Lynn who is leading, but it is a great start from Andrew Kogani. I said keep an eye on him, and he has come up from the third row of the grid in that blue and orange. No Chevron there. He's up into third place. Yeah, what a fantastic, or whatever problems they had. It was unfortunate for the Lotus, who just tried to sneak up the insiders. Now, the number 37, very brave on the brakes, but he's done it. But watch out behind oh. on apps. Oh, he just ran on a little bit of oil slightly wide there. It's going to be now a drag race down the straight, but fantastic race. It's unfortunate there for the Lotus, though, who just got nipped, but he's still in the battle. Yeah, it's still there, but what a, a good move by Miles Griffiths. That was brave stuff, but he's now taken the lead of this race, the number 37, and the man who started so well, Sean Lynn, finds himself down in third. Then that Lotus has started on the front row, down to fourth, so Kubota now in fourth place, trying to hold off the rest of the field. Everybody chasing Andrew Kukoni, and still battling here with Sean Lynn. This is for second place. Andrew, that uh, Chevron probably not quite as quick in a straight line as the GT40, but so light and small, very neat through these tighter corners like the chicane. Yeah, there seems to be maybe a little bit of debris on there as well. Someone's maybe ran over it. We've seen there in the background, but a nice, healthy lead. A great first lap from Miles Griffiths there. But down at Sean Lynch will be looking now ahead going, oh, I need to get past, need to clear the number two car of Andrew Cacoldi because he'll be wanting to track down the final race of the way here for the 80th members meeting at Goodwood. The Gordon Spice Trophy is underway. A lot of wheel spin, though, for the Mark 1 Gordon. It looks like it was a good start for the Ford Capri of Jake Hill, but smoke billowing out the back of Jake Hill's Capri. And I think that was Rob Huff and the Chevy Camaro who managed to get up to second super quickly as well. Nick Swift falling back from pole position, trying to hang on in there. Just slots in front of Jim Morris in the VW. But it's uh, Hill followed by uh, Huff to start one and two and what's smoking the race leading car is smoking we're looking back from jake hills uh, wow really well driven but very smoky and possibly terminally well let's hope not but his capri leading the race is your car don't forget it's passing the point where he went into the tire wall yesterday morning the car was repaired it managed to win its race but that's a slight concern is that just overfill we'll have to wait and see yeah, it might just burn off, but certainly that's going to be giving Rob Huff a face full of smoke. He's not going to be able to see a lot apart from where Jake Hill is, full of the smoke, and there Jake Hill will be. Well, I'm just slightly concerned maybe that get away from the line was just a little bit too good. Was a, a rev limit uh, exceeded to cause all this smoke coming from the car, so maybe the driver in second place. Uh, Rob Huff, who can see very little, will suddenly be in the lead. But Nick Swift in third place is hanging in there, guessing almost muscle memory, perhaps, as they go down the Labyrinth straight towards Woodcut. It's a huge lead. It's probably about a second and a half. But Jake Hill will be very aware. He'll be looking at the gauges. He'll be looking in the mirrors. Will he even go off on his own oil? That's always a concern. Through Woodcut, he goes into the chicane. This is the point where it has to be slowed right down. Can he? Let's see. Well, you know what could be a worry? I've seen this in similar races so far this weekend. A Porsche, very similar thing. Smoke billowing out the back. And after a while, it got a black and orange flag and had to come in and see what the issue was. Seconds on the clock then and we wait for the flag. It flies and we're racing in. In Goodwood once again for the Salvadori Cup and it looks like the dust has genuinely settled and it's a good start for our pole man Martin Stretton in the list of Jaguar who holds off the first and then second Michael Gans having a fierce fight. The Lotus Climax with the Jaguar D-type of Gary Pearson fighting but it's one, two and three as they started but Gary Pearson wants to fight this. He's going to be on the inside of the too it doesn't matter he's already through so that's the Jaguar T type up into second Pearson in second just behind Stretton and then Michael Gans drops down a place to third a clean getaway from everyone yeah Michael Gans the number 26 now is having a look down the inside at St Mary's thought better of it but it's Martin Stretton who got a great start and he's already made out had a healthy lead but Michael Gans struggling on that dust but he's having a look now at the the inside of the van corner. Yeah, James Woods going down the inside there uh, of the uh, the number 33. That was David Hart. Great start uh, for uh, James Wood further back. And then we've got the number uh, 17 doing battle. That was uh, Cypher Sam. He was so frustrated during qualifying earlier. Felt he could, could have qualified much higher up. He's now trying to make his way through and up into the pack. But leading right now is our pole sitter, Martin Stretton, with the list of Jaguar, followed by Michael Gans. But then the rest of the gaggle all come while they try and sort themselves out. We're focusing on the list of Jaguar. That is David Hart, the number 33 car, which is uh, uh, following the 41. Uh, that's another list of Jaguar of um, Mark Donner. 
as they fight tooth and nail. The Jim Clark Trophy here at Goodwood is underway. Great start by David Dickinson from the middle of the front row. David Dickinson, number 44, the green one. He got away superbly well. Steve Soap was up on the outside, but that's also a good start for Alex Brundle, number 33. Got around the outside, Alex is on the grass. Oh! He gets it back on the target. I thought he was going to go off there, Alice. Yeah, very close. Fantastic start by Alex from that second row. But yes, yeah, Steve Soper, a dreadful start for him. As you mentioned, he wasn't quite up to the line at the front, and that all makes the difference. And it clearly, yeah, but David Dickerson, what a launch off the line. <laughs> Great to see. Down the back, uh, Katsuaki Kubota. He's sharing that car with David Pratham, who will be taking on later. Look at the slipping and sliding, and a bit of push and shoving. Andy Prio, number 13, there side by side as they head down towards Levant Corner. But it's a great battle up front at the moment as they all head around. David Dickinson just losing out to the lead, though, uh, as Alex Brundle taking advantage. And he's managed to squeeze in front now. So Alex, who so nearly went off at that first corner, but uh, now has managed to get involved. And this is all great stuff to see. Now we can watch some of the onboard action as well. On board with Mark Shaw. He's right in the midfield, sharing the car with Dario Franchitti, who will be taking it on later on. The Moss Trophy at the 80th members' meeting underway. And it's a good start from the pole man. Alex Bunker for the Chevy. Doesn't move at all. Does finally get going. But actually from the outside, James Cottingham in the AC Cobra. Going around the outside. And I think he's taken Alex Bunker. Yes, he has. It is the initial advantage to James Cottingham. And now Alex Bunker finding himself under pressure from Oliver Bryant. Well, if you've got lots of grunts, it's rude not to make the most of it. And certainly from the outside of the front row in that white AC Cobra with the black roof and the back wheel. James Cottingham has got clear, but through the course of the lap, the flow, the wonderful flow the Jaguar E-types have should enable the front two cars, Alex Bunkham and Ollie Bryant, to fight back. But uh, exactly what needed to be done for the AC Cobra of James Cottingham, third became first. It did, beautifully done. And we've got some great battles going on further down the field as well. The uh, John Hugenholtz in the number 14 Ferrari just getting past there, that silver Ferrari. But we'll also be keeping an eye out. There it is, number 14. You can see he's coming back again uh, in the fight. So there is John Hugenholtz. This is a car that raced in Italy in the 1960s. And Hugenholtz has had it for some 40 years pretty much now. Uh, well, just a year, just under that and uh, he is enjoying racing. He always loves racing here at Goodwood. Number 77 E-Type as well. That is Guy Zeiser. And that's, uh, that's a car that's been rebuilt by the CKL team. Look at this, three abreast for the Austin Healy in the middle. That's a, a rally, it, it is a rally car originally, that Austin Healy, a winner in Key Rally, the Alpine Rally. I see that it's still got the labels on it and the rally lights on it, which is fun to see. And what you saw in that little battle, the, uh, the green and yellow Lotus Elite just had no answer to the power of the Austin Healy. Go racing, 20 minutes shortly underway. It's Ray Malik on pole who gets a good start. The Chris Drake forward in the middle. The Silver 33 has a bit of a stuff but does eventually get going. But I think it's Ray Malik who makes the best of the starts. I think we've had a bit of a stall of further back and uh, our pit lane start that does get going with the help of a little bit of a push. Chris Drake now trying to get back up to speed, but it's Malik who was away and well from pole position, chased by the orange Stuart Roach car, the Alexis Ford. Further back, we've got the uh, number 10 car. That is the Stanguilini of Michael Gans trying to find his way through into the top five, but a fairly clean start then from our Formula Junior races. Yeah, very keen. A couple starts that did slow to get away. Mark Woodhouse did need a push to get going. He's already caught up the back of the pack, but yeah, dreadful start. Oh, car off as Drake well, as, that is, that is number Drake. 33. Hopefully he's going to build to back on nicely then. Oh, and another number 10, Michael Gans has spun around as well. And now the number 8, Alex Morton. So I wonder if they've come together because they were in close proximity to each other on the circuit. So frustration and the number 33 of Chris Drake as well. He was fighting at the... At the at sharp the end. Yeah, he was. Well, it wasn't a good start for our uh, our second place man, Chris, Chris Drake, but then he did manage to get back up and going, and it was a fairly clean start until we got about halfway around the lap. Uh, so, cars spinning off everywhere you look, but everyone's still trying to carry on going. Up front, it is these two. It is the green uh, Formula Junior car, the number 32 of Ray Malik up front, being hunted down by the all-orange number 12 of uh, Chris Drake. 
and they've kind of detached away from everybody else. They've kept it clean, they've kept it pointing in the same direction as they finish lap one and start lap number two of this 20-minute race already. The clock ticking down. We get underway for the Trofeo Nuvolari race and we are going racing. It looks like it's a great start for our pole man Richard Bradley in his Aston Martin. The Alter, the two-seater, the blue, Gareth Burnett car also making a good start and in fact manages to get the jump on all of them as well. I think that might have been Patrick Blakeney Edwards in the Fraser Nash slotting in behind him as well. So a good start from uh, Blakeney Edwards on the second row of the grid. Well, I'm really intrigued to see a brilliant start from pole position, but the pole starter is back in fourth place. I expected the TT reps, the Fraser Nashes, to come through, but what I didn't think was going to be such a brilliant start from the outer, uh, the two-seater in the hands of Gareth Burnett. And what went wrong for Richard Bradley, I do not know. Nose in front from pole position. By the time they got to Magic, he was in fourth. He's now fighting back. He's past one of those Fraser Nashes. He's back into third, but in front of him, Robert Beebe getting a bit twitchy into St Mary's, but by about four car lengths, we have Gareth Burnett leading this race. Let's see if everybody behind will stay on the black stuff and stay off the green sword. Unfortunately, Annette Mason is on the green sword, but that looks as though it's a mechanical failure. I'm not going to guess on that front, but anyhow, she is out of the race and pulls her car safely out of the way on the exit of Madgwick. Huge shame for that uh, Aston Martin Ulster, but back uh, towards the front end, I think we saw it was Robert Beebe in the phrase, and actually uh, made also a great start from the second row. So uh, Patrick Blakeney Evans and Robert Beebe both making excellent starts. Here is Beebe now trying to get through on the number 41 car, and that is... Uh, uh, Brad, Brad, Bradley. It's Richard Bradley who got up in from, fell back to fourth, up to third, into second. Now the, the Fraser Nashes are trying to fight back. Michael Birch in the tall, number 20, tall, but down to fifth place. But uh, let's see how they settle down. But for Gareth Burnett, that's a really good start. But really, it was a poor start. Not initially, but literally in the second or third gear change for Richard Bradley. Now he's fighting back, closing in in second place. Gap between Burnett and Bradley, just under two seconds. Start of the race. Julian Majub on the inside, up front pole position, makes another very good start. Good start from Ben Collins. And once again, as yesterday, it's a dreadful start for Mark Walker in the Darak. But he did say how difficult it is to get off the line. Well, he only makes one gear change all race, first to second thereafter. He stays in second for the remainder of the five laps, but I don't mind him falling back because we know that means he's going to be fighting way back through the order, and it's fabulous, isn't it, Alice? Yeah, exactly. We've got the view of the leader from now, or from behind the leader, uh, but you, you're going to see Mark charge through the field as there's a move down the inside now. And the number 23 is that? No, yeah, it's, it's, it's Christian Mann. I think it's, it's uh, Julian, isn't it, who's come through, who was on pole, Julian Majub earlier on, and he has grabbed the advantage. He certainly has, and Mark Walker, I was just counting the cars down, he's back into sixth place, working his way forward, but that long pointed tail of the Sunbeam in Indianapolis, heading off into the distance, and remember when Mark Walker got up with him, Mark had all the power, but Julian had the ability, the handling, and the ability to brake late. Not they have much in the way of braking any of these cars. Alice, it's amazing watching them use these handbrake things on the outside of the cockpit, isn't it? It's so different. There seems to be so much going on, and, and as Bruce touched on, we got the mark as well. He leans. You can see he's using every inch of his body, and the car as well, having to pump the pump with the fuel. There's so much going on. You can already see Mark making a move now through the field, he's not hanging back. He knows the fantastic race that he had between him and Julian earlier on, where, or yesterday, sorry, where they were swapping places going down to, to Woodgut Corner. So here it is, this is Mark Walker on the Darak. This is one of the earliest cars that is out there from 1905, but it has a 25 and a half litre V8 engine. From then, it was a land speed record car. It was one of the first ever cars uh, to reach certain speeds, some 300 horsepower. One gear he uses all the way around, doesn't he? Well, he's got gets going. off the line, brackets badly two days running, but look, he's coming back. But great start from Julian Majou from pole position. The Cliff Grey car will go from third. The flag flies, and we get underway here for the Tony Gaze Trophy. And it looks like it's a great start, really, from all three on the front row. How will they unveil as we go into turn one? And it is the pole sitter who holds on to the lead for the time being. It's Cliff Grey, who's managed to jump Jonathan Alvacasas uh, up into uh, second spot. So the Fraser Nash getting the better of the Austin Healy, but the Jaguar that leads them all away from the line. All fairly clean so far, jostling in the back four position, but 
so far so good as the number 20 car really looking a little bit out of shape there at some stage. Bobby Bernro was in the lead, he's fallen back third, fourth, fifth, sixth. He's had a problem, he had a problem yesterday in, in practice and he's dropping out of the race as they get down to Ford Water. So the driver who started from second on the grid is now leading. That's Jonathan Abacassis in the Austin Healy 100. Oh, running quite right. Number 35, uh, Tim Crichton, driven Fraser Nash there, gets it right for the second part of St Mary's. But for Bobby Verdenro, problems and also for car number 51, that is not going well. That's Michael Hibbert who started from the pit lane in the Buckler. That's not going very far at any speed whatsoever. Yeah, Jonathan Abacassis in the end, after a bit of a slow start, really managed to calm his way through the field and hit the front very quickly indeed. Such a shame for Bobby Verdenro. We are uh, uh, on board with uh, one of the... Uh, this is Pat Blakeney Edwards yes, is, who started it? from sixth on the grid, car number two, pressing on and his rear facing camera shows the cars dwindling in the background as he's uh, gaining speed and picking his way up the order. I think by the end of the opening that will be up into maybe fourth place. Let's take a look. Down into Woodcut they go. We can see Jonathan Abacass is still leading their Austin Healy 100 at the front field, but side by side action in behind in the battle for third place. And Pat Blakeney Edwards, I think it is, diving through. Goodwood, the second part is on the way, and it's a really good start from Dan Jackson on the inside. He's gone away exceptionally well. One bike a bit so away, that is the rotary, I think. But no, he doesn't have the lead going in. Scott Carson's got in front as they go through the first corner at Madwick. And this could be a big battle between the top three. Scott Carson with the initial advantage. Yeah, he has indeed. As you say, it's all the TZ350s at the front. Carson, Cooper, then uh, Jackson. And then the first four stroke, Andy Hornby there. Yeah, Andy Hornby, who started Oh, off. someone's right in the cross. Oh. Massive moment. They were just went a bit wide coming out of there, got it completely sideways. That might have been Gary Vines on the grass, but he's made it back on the track in one piece. My goodness, that was a scary moment, but thankfully they all got through there. As you say, Gary Vines uh, got through there as well. But our race leader is Scott Carson being chased at the moment by Dan Cooper and Dan Jackson. The three who were on that front row together are all making their way down the order here. Jamie O'Brien was just keeping out of the way a little bit. Hopefully that bike's working OK. But there is Michael Rutter, number 67, hoping that that engine is running a little more smoothly today than it was yesterday, as we're looking at uh, our race leader, Scott Carson. Not a big advantage, and in fact, Dan Jackson's on the attack again. Yeah, he's so good, though, Carson, there. We can just see some of the other two shows coming in. There's Gary Vines, 23. He's the top 250 in the race so far. But um, one of the things Scott Carson really good at getting away on these tyres, no tyre warmers, of course, on the first lap. And that takes some confidence and, and takes some doing.